All right, here we go. The battle within a battle. Family bragging rights on the line. The young bloke, Zed. Gee, light on his feet, just like Sam. But this is Zed's time to shine, and here he is on the log grip. Done, sorted, fixed. What's next? Broken pipes next. And we saw what this did to Lee Cossie. Oh, well done. He gets to what we call the mushroom and then resets. Magic. Spin ball wizard now. This is where Zed will come into his own. All about upper body strength. He's a rock climber. Yeah, thank you, Zed. So good, so good. Let him go. Good jump onto the first handlebar. Look at that control. Those handlebars can twist, but not right now. Zed Colback, great core and upper body strength. Six foot tall, 71 kilograms, and he's off. On to the floating stairs. This is the first time ninjas have seen this obstacle that begins with that climb up the pole. Up the pole and then a climb down these floating stairs. What a nightmare. And he's sucking in the oxygen. And really good form. You can see that angle there. His arms are at a 90 degree angle, meaning he's got plenty of gas in the tank. He's not at a full dead hang. Ooh, although, as I just say that, he goes for a little rest there, but that's fair enough. One more, yeah, you're good. Yeah, lovely. And now the warped wall is in front of him. He can do it. He wastes no time. Straight up to the top of the warped wall. Yes, Ben, but this is where it gets serious. Fatigue's building and the last three obstacles are the toughest of all. Not one ninja managed to complete them in the last semi. Zed Kovac now onto the second part of the semi-final course. And his first look at the salmon ladder to paperclip. And Zed has still got very much a business look on his face at the moment. He's got to go up three rungs. There's one. Have a look at the drive from his chest and shoulders. There's two. He's strong. Yeah. He's nailed the third. That's great. Onto the paper clips now. They'll tilt with Zed's shifting body weight. They will. See Zed's rock climbing skills coming out here. He's using his legs to give his arms a rest. That's very, very clever. They're going to be burning, but now he needs to cross over. Well, the transition is the toughest part. Come on, Zed. Here we go. This will be a big relief, yes. Great transition. What is amazing, though, is how composed he's looking at this moment, shifting his weight between his arms and legs to share the load. That is clever. He's got to be tiring, but he looks so in control. Zed, a very big chance here. This is where the rock climbing experience will come in. Look at him, see? Oh, what is Look this? at that. When you spend half your life hanging from a cliff somewhere, you're able to do these amazing things. And imagine the rock climbing fraternity at this point in WA. They all know Zed Colback. He's an instructor over there. All of his students and all of his pals will know how well he can go in this competition. Make sure you've got it in you. Onto the hourglass to tramp to cargo nets. Yeah, that's perfect. Come on. As he shimmers across the hourglass. Small shuffles. Look, he'll start looking down now onto the trampoline. Nice balance. X marks the spot. You know where you've got to bounce. No one got past this last time. Oh, yes. That's a good hit. Now just needs to get under the cargo net. This won't be a problem. He's not going to make a mistake here, surely. No, not a chance at go back. Zed, one more obstacle. You've got this. You got this, Connor. But can he finish the chimney to rope climb? Seven brutal meters. Here he goes. Just positions himself. He's got to use his arms and legs for the first four meters. But it looks like he's starting to struggle with his fingers. It's taking his toll. He's been shaking him. He's been wiggling him. He's been waggling him. Trying to get some blood back inside. Come on, Zed. You can do this. Almost at the rope. Oh, he's tiring. He's a little over halfway. And now it's all arms, all hands. 
He's using the feet because he's thinking if it's all arms and all hands, I'm not going to be able to do it. So gutsy. Have we ever seen anyone fight this hard on the rope before? And now he cracks a little bit of a smile as he goes through that hole. Well done, Zed. You're up there. you just got to get your hand on that buzzer. Bam. What a relief. The rock climber has just climbed the chimney. And what about the smile from Zed Colback as he realises <laughs> he's made the grand final of Australian Ninja Warrior. Man, get your luck out! And with a flick of the hair, we have another ninja complete the semi-final course. There yeah, she means business, Freddie. She's won over 500 medals, including seven Aussie championships, world championships, and a silver medal at the Commonwealth Games. She has a fine CV to become a ninja. And the gymnastics experience seems to come in very handy. She'll need it all tonight. Two minutes 55 is the time to beat. On to the UFO slider. Oh, I thought she'd left it too late, but she managed it, Freddie. Getting more and more confident as she goes. Needs to gather some speed now to run through Bob. Nearly taken another victim, but Oliveira was having none of it. In a gym that should be no stranger to a trampoline. Here she goes. Moves very well through the air, hanging from that wheel. Oh, this is the great dilemma. When do you let go or can you grab it with your feet? Our competitors here, well, many of them have mastered this cargo net. They've worked out that the easiest way is actually to hook your leg in first. She's getting tantalisingly closer and she's hooked on. The long legs stretched out to enable her onto the cargo net. And now she clamours her way down to get onto the mat. Remember, 2 minutes 55 is the time Olivia needs to beat to make it into the top 18. Now her favourite apparatus is the uneven bar. So... She has probably been looking forward to the tilting frames. She is looking good at this point. Very good indeed. The crowd is pumped, willing her on. Just like Larissa did, she's showing plenty of upper body strength. But can she nail the dismount? Can she? She does. This is Olivia Vivian's opportunity to be the first woman on Australian Ninja Warrior to make it to the top of the warped wall. Can she use those long arms and legs to make it up? Here we go, first attempt. No, she's well sure. Two minutes and 55 seconds. That's what she needs to beat. 30 seconds to get to the top and into the semi-finals. This is the moment. She has one more chance. Will she be the first woman on Australian Ninja Warrior to make it to the top? I've got a very good feeling. This is for a place in the semi-finals. Will she do it down under? Come on! No! Oh, so close. She waves to the crowd. That is a sterling effort all the same. Ryan, six foot and nearly 90 kg, and we've seen some of the bigger ninjas struggle tonight, Ben. He'll be hoping to buck that trend, and now the log grip. He's got fantastic core strength, and the size helps on some obstacles. It can be a hindrance on others. Here he is, legs wrapped around it. Makes no mistake of that one. This is different, Freddie. This is a big challenge, this next one. Oh, sleepless nights about this obstacle. Needs to get some speed. Come on, Ryan. Oh, started off slow, but he's sure-footed. No matter how you get across, just get across it. Ryan Solomon completed his heat with little fuss. On, he didn't Ryan. get too caught up in the moment, and I think that's exactly his approach in the semi-finals. Well, he's a, he's a Queenslander, and that's the kind of Queensland approach. No nonsense, just get the business done and have a look at all of those muscles in that body as he negotiates his way down this cargo net. Well, he's used to working hard. He's a plumber. And all the way through this competition, remember, the tradies, they have been outstanding. 
And his time is looking outstanding as well. He's neck and neck with Ben Paulson. And here he goes, now taking on the big wheel. The first big wheel. He's got two more to conquer. Let's go. Grabs onto the second one. Come on, baby. Got this. And this third one acts like a pendulum. Needs to get it moving. So he can find the distance he needs to get onto the mat. Oh. Did he hurt his ankle there? I, I think, think he did. He hurt his ankle on the dismount. Is that going to cause him trouble going up the wall? wall? Well, I hope not. But I think you saw already he struggled a little bit with the wall and his heat. Two minutes on the clock at the moment. And he's, yes, he's there. Pretty cautious on that ankle, you can see. You'd think it'd have to slow him down. 4.40 is tonight's fastest time. But right now, Ryan just needs to keep moving. And here he goes, making his way through the swinging spikes. His time is good too. He's the fastest to this point. But can he keep that going? All of a sudden, he's got his back turned on the next spike. He's going to have to... Work out a way around that, and he does. He turns the body around and finds enough room to grab a hold of it. Up high, mate, up high. Now, here's where the ankle might come into play. Most of our competitors use the ankle, they use the feet to grab the bottom part of these poles, although. This is a, another strategy we've seen some of them doing. Instead of grabbing it on either side of the pole, they're pushing from one to the other. You've done this plenty of times. You've got this. As you get tired, you do start to slide down the poles. Give yourself as much height as you can. So if you do start slipping, you're high enough to give yourself a little bit of room. Incredibly, despite that ankle, he is still on track to beat tonight's fastest time. He's got a minute 10 to get up that chimney to the buzzer, and he is not giving up, Ben. The face is the giveaway, though, at this part of the obstacle course, and he has started to show that he's struggling a little bit. The brain saying, I just need to get one yep. foot following yep. the other, and he does. Here we go, just seven metres separating Ryan Solomon and a chance of reaching the grand final and a crack at Mount Midori Armour. This is his moment to shine. Ryan Solomon, 28 years of age, a plumber by day, and he takes on the chimney. OK, 4.40, the time to beat. This is going to be close. He's really getting pushed to his limits at this point. Four metres, five metres. Can he keep going? The ankle must be screaming. Seven metres, he's at the top there. Eight seconds to get to the buzzer. His body is absolutely screaming. But he's got just enough left to get himself through the hole. And he's done that. He's on top of the world. Hits the buzzer and finishes only four seconds behind Ben Paulson.